Unless you're lucky enough to be a trust fund baby, your first fast car is generally something like a hot hatch. And in the case of Hyundai, it is exactly the same. The South Korean car maker has kicked off its high performance division with this, the i30N. And we've come to Rome's Vallelunga circuit to test it out for the first time in its final production trim. It's going to be a big year for hot hatches and not just because of Hyundai's entry into the pocket rocket segment. We're about to get the new Honda Civic Type R, Ford has a limited edition of the Focus RS coming, and then there's the upcoming new generation Renault Sport Megane RS. But the i30N has been created to challenge them all. It will arrive in local showrooms from March 2018 and will come in two model grades. A standard version that is expected to cost around $37,500 and a performance package that will command a premium of around five grand. This is going to be a bit of a game changer, especially for Hyundai itself. This is the first time it's done a genuine high performance car and at first impressions, it's pretty damn positive. We drove a prototype of this car earlier this year in Australia and came away absolutely impressed. So what has Hyundai done to make this a genuine hot hatch? Well, they've amplified every element up to 11. This car has been developed at the Nürburgring of all places plus its Namyang proving ground in Korea. That's why it's called an N. Both models are powered by a two litre turbocharged four cylinder that drives the front wheels through a six speed manual transmission. The standard version generates 184 kilowatts and 353 newton meters, or up to 378 newton meters on a temporary overboost function. While the performance package increases peak power to 206 kilowatts, with the same level of torque produced across a wider rev range. And in this particular one, the high performance package, it's got bigger brakes, bigger tyres, a mechanical limited slip diff, and even more supportive seats and a whole bunch of other functions. So how does that all translate into the real world? Well, this thing is fun. You can feel at the moment you get behind the steering wheel. Everything is in its right place. There's a chunky, grippy steering wheel here. The seats are nicely bolstered. And the ride, well, it's purposely firm, but it's still got really good body control. The engine, it's nice and refined and quiet when you're in this standard normal mode, but then you've got these two blue paddles on the steering wheel, which you can change the drive modes through sport and eco on one side, but then you can go straight to the end mode, which basically livens everything up. Particularly when you're up it for the rent, it sounds glorious above 6,000 RPM, and then it's got this crackle and burble on the overrun that just encourages you to drive it quickly. As for how it handles, well, it might still be only a front wheel drive car, but this thing has got plenty of grip. It's really playful, but also really poised and planted through the bends. It's only got a six speed manual gearbox. There is an automatic version coming, but this thing is nice. It's got a good mechanical shift to it, and it's easy to use. While it's nice and livable to drive in everyday situations, with enough characters to satisfy boy races, Hyundai has also designed this thing to be playful on the track too. And that shouldn't be surprising, considering the car has competed in the previous two Nürburgring 24-hour races as part of its gruelling development program. So, let's see how it stacks up on the challenging Vallelunga circuit. On first impressions, this thing is a ton of fun. You can drive it pretty damn easily and pretty damn quickly. It's not quite as playful as some of those other European hot hatches like a Megane RS or a Ford Focus ST. It's more planted and secure and neutral, but you can easily chuck it around. The steering is really nice and linear. It's got this uh, really precise front end on it, but it is a front wheel drive car. So as you can tell, it will still tend to understeer if you really push it to its limit, but you just got to back off that little bit. And the engine has got this really nice linear turbo nature to it. It's not quite spiky, but it does pull pretty well at the top end. And the rev matching, it actually, you know, while I've not been a fan of them in the past, it kind of makes you feel like a dunce. This one is just perfectly matched to the engine and the gearbox. It actually makes it a hell of a lot easier to drive quickly. The engine is a real gem, pulling us past 200 k's on the front straight. Hyundai reckons it'll hit 100 kilometers an hour from a standstill in 6.4 seconds, which isn't the quickest, but on par with other front drive hot hatches. Well, there you go, a couple of laps around the Vallelunga circuit and this thing definitely stands up to the task. It's a great little fun car to drive and certainly capable of the odd track day out. So Hyundai, I reckon they've nailed it. They've got a livable, fun, little hot hatch.
Hot hatches in general prove that you don't need to spend half a million dollars on a typical Italian supercar to be fast or to have fun behind the wheel. And as far as first attempts go, the Hyundai i30N absolutely nails that point home. In fact, this thing is red hot.